Hi there, welcome to Jujube DIY. I'm Sarah, thanks for stopping by today. Today I'm hosting the fourth Friday challenge with my good friend Lisa over at Our Gray House. The theme for this month was St. Patrick's Day or spring. I chose to do some St. Patrick's Day DIYs for a tear tray. I'm not doing a whole lot of St. Patrick's Day, so this is the only DIY that you'll see on my channel for this year. I hope you enjoy these DIYs, and if you wanna see how I made them, let's get started. Alrighty, to get started with our first DIY of the day, we are going to use one of these wood planks from the Dollar Tree. This was the square shape that they sold, came in a six pack. We're just going to use one today. I'm going to give that first third of our square a coat of the Kelly Green color from Apple Barrel, just straight out of the bottle. And then I'm going to go in and add a little bit of white to that same green color and make a mid-tone. I'm just going to use my brush with all that paint on there just to kind of mix those two colors together. So I'm going up into our darker color, grabbing some more of that darker color on my brush, moving it down into the lighter color, and just kind of going back and forth in between the two colors. I want there to be a soft edge in between that darker color and our mid-tone color. Now we're going to go in with uh, even more white and we're going to make a lighter shade. This will go on the very bottom third of our square and I'm going to keep going back and forth with my paintbrush and those three colors to create that ombre effect. I want the bottom to be much lighter and the top to be a lot darker. So just keep going back and forth, blending it out until you get it how you like it. Now don't be afraid to play with this paint. This is a super fun process and if you don't get it right, you could just paint over it with some white paint and try again or sand it off. No worries, but just have fun with this. This is a really fun technique and I just love the result of an ombre. And I do want to add here that it is imperative that your paint be wet still when you're blending. So you want those colors to mix together so that you can create that ombre effect. But yeah, just keep going in. If it gets too light at the top, go in with your darkest color and then start from the top and start going down again and then add in that mid-tone again and just keep playing with it until it's just right. Alrighty, now that our board is dry, I want to add March 17th to the front of this board. I just went into my computer, picked out some fonts that I liked and printed this out. Next, I'm gonna put some graphite paper underneath it, trace that out and transfer that onto the board. Now you guys know, I love to show you how you can create projects like this without a Cricut. You can create beautiful projects without a Cricut. It's not a problem. But if you wanna use vinyl or stickers for this, then definitely go for it. So this is gonna sound a little lazy or crazy or maybe both, but I don't always like to get my Cricut out. I actually enjoy the process of hand painting this stuff on. So that's why you guys don't see me using my Cricut a whole lot. Not only because I like to show you how to use, make beautiful projects without a Cricut, but I just enjoy this process so much. So anyhow, I just wanted to mention that. Um, as you can see, I am using this marker from Sharpie. It's an oil-based marker and I thought I'd give it a try. It was recommended to me and I didn't really love it. It kind of had a strong smell. It wasn't super opaque. I didn't feel like I could layer on top of it. Um, and the nib kind of felt like it was gonna fall out. So maybe I got a faulty marker, I'm not sure, but I went back in with my Posca markers that I've been using lately. And even though they're a little more expensive, I'm really enjoying those markers. So I, um, that's what I used to finish up this project, the lettering part of it. Now I'm gonna go in with this little paintbrush and I just did some white and black checks along the edge. Now I'm gonna take that black Posca marker and I'm gonna create a little border along that check. 
and I'm going to go all the way around this whole sign. Now that we have our black border, I'm going to go in with a little bit of white and I'm just going to make dash marks. Now, if there's something that I'm doing that you don't really love, definitely leave it out. You guys are the masters of your creation. So I love to inspire you and give you ideas. But if there's something that I do that you don't really care for, then definitely do it however you love it. Now to finish off our piece, I am going to add a little bit of scrap wood. This is just, I have no idea, just scrap wood, but I thought it would make a good stand. So I'm just gonna add that to the back of my project and that completes this project. I think this is really cute and I love that ombre. For DIY number two, I definitely knew I wanted to include rainbows in my DIYs for my St. Patrick's Day decor. I love rainbows. The colors just give me so much joy and happiness. I am a color girl. You guys know this by now if you've been with me for a while. And I had to incorporate some bright rainbows in my DIYs today. So we're going to use one of these little rainbow lights from the Dollar Tree. I wanted to pencil in my cloud tops. It really kind of wasn't a definitive line there so I'm just using a pencil and I'm just kind of creating some little bubbles for the top of the clouds um, so that there's more definition up there I'll go over those lines with a Posca pen and then I'm going to use a little bit of spackle to fill in those little lines that are um, kind of in between those bands where the rainbow is separated it's like a grooved out line I don't know maybe when they cut it or whatever but I didn't really want that in my cloud so I just filled it in with a little bit of spackle next we are going to paint our rainbow with all of those beautiful colors so we're just going to use the standard Roy G. Biv color scheme for this rainbow if you don't know what Roy G. Biv is or who Roy G. Biv is that is red orange yellow green blue and purple so we're not going to use indigo in our rainbow we're just going to go with the basic six so i am going to go in with red first obviously and paint that out now i also am going to create another project later on that has rainbows but in the beads so <laughs> i'm just painting those beads at the same time as i'm painting my rainbow to help keep from wasting paint. So of course the clouds are white and fluffy now. I did go over them with a little bit of the extreme glitter from Folk Art in the color holographic. Not super easy to get a, a video of that, but I did end up getting a picture of it. So you'll see that here in just a minute at the end. So while I was painting, I did decide to kind of take this apart. These things pop apart real super easy. So I just popped it all apart because it was going to be easier to uh, paint the front of it without that big bulky back. And now I'm just gluing it back together. And as you can see, everything in the back is painted black. So now we're going to go in with our Posca pen in white. And I'm just going to use some little dash marks in between each of the colors. So if you don't have a Posca pen or don't want to buy one because they are a little on the pricey side, <laughs> definitely just use a fine line paintbrush and some white paint and you can get the same effect. No worries. Light and there she is. She's beautiful. She's colorful and she's sparkly. I love her. As I mentioned before, today is the fourth Friday open challenge that I host with my super sweet friend Lisa over at Our Gray House. If you've never been to Lisa's channel, go check her out. Give her some love. She does amazing DIYs. They're so cute and easy and super quick. I just adore everything she does. Also, we have got a ton of people joining us today. There will be a playlist in my description box. Go check that out to see what everyone's doing for this challenge. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to DIY number three. 
I picked up these little ceramic gnomes from the Dollar Tree around Christmas time, I think. Maybe late fall, probably, I'm guessing. I don't know. Um, but I think that they were intended for like Santa Clauses or Christmas gnomes. But I grabbed a couple of them thinking that they would be adorable for other times of the year. So one of my thoughts was definitely for St. Patrick's Day. These are really fun little like DIY ceramics that the Dollar Tree has been carrying. Um, and to prepare this piece, I did give it a coat of the Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I think that just helps keep it from drinking up my cheap paint quite so much. And that makes my colors a little more opaque. So I did end up giving the hat three coats and then his little robe, I did two coats. I just mixed up a little bit of white paint with that Kelly green color to create that color for his robe. And then I kind of went in with a little bit of a darker color to do a little bit of shading. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I thought it was kind of fun. Those marks were there and I thought it was pretty easy to figure out where there might be some shadows. So I kind of wanted to show you how I got into those little areas without mixing up the paint too much. I'm just kind of pushing this flat brush right up against the um, edge there, I guess, of his robe. And I'm just kind of pushing it so that it's just kissing that very edge. I did his little feet and hands in black and then went in with some orange for his little beard and painted his nose. Um, I think it's called Sunkissed Peach, but you can definitely paint his nose whatever color suits your fancy. Doesn't have to be a lighter skin tone, it can be dark or mid or blue or pink, whatever you want to do. So now I'm going to go in with the stylus. These are just stylus that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. They have two different size ends and I'm going to dip my paint into the bigger size and I'm going to create some little polka dots on my little gnome's hat. Just be sure that you keep checking, um, holding it back out to make sure that you're not doing too many. I'm probably a little guilty of too many, but I love them. So in my opinion, it's not too many, um, but it is kind of easy to go a little overboard, especially when you're having fun with it. So, you know, if you don't want too many polka dots, just keep checking and make sure that you're getting the right amount that you would like for your little gnome. But I love these little white polka dots. I think it is a little unexpected and um, just gives him a little more character. So here he is next to some little plants. I think he's just too cute. For DIY number four, we're going to use some of the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. We'll need 15 of these little guys and then we're going to need six of the full size Jenga blocks. I always end up with these in my stash, um, whether I find them at thrift stores or garage sales. They're pretty fun to have on hand and you can do lots of fun crafts with them. So I like to keep them in my stash, but I'm going to glue three of them together. I'm going to do this twice. So I've got two sets of three of the big Jenga blocks, and then I'm going to make five sets of three of the tumbling tower blocks. So because the Jenga is kind of um, grouped into the piece, I am going to use a little bit of spackle to like smooth that out. And then I'll sand that down until it's smooth. That way when I paint it, I won't be able to see the word Jenga. And I'm just gonna clamp those together after I glued them. So here I'm showing you how I'm like crisscrossing these, um, these tumbling tower blocks. I would say definitely have them go all in the same direction so that the part that's showing in the front of your hat, because we're kind of making that little leprechaun hat here, um, is all the long side showing instead of flipping them back and forth. I don't know why I did that, but I didn't really end up loving the way that it looked, but it was okay. I gave it a few coats of the Kelly green color from Apple Barrel. And now I'm gonna add in a little bit of Buffalo chick, chick, 
buffalo check ribbon around the very bottom add a little bow and this piece is done this is super cute and super easy for our fifth diy it's going to be another rainbow i just love the rainbows i think i mentioned that before but i'm going to say it again i love the rainbows <laughs> these colors just make me so happy anyhow this is a diy rainbow ornament from michaels i think that they were out last year during pride month but i picked up a package of them because i just love rainbows and i knew that i wanted to use them for different things in my decor so here we are using one i'm going to use all apple barrel paint here i will leave the colors in my description down below and I say all apple barrel, but really the orange is not apple barrel. That one is a deco art. And that is because, um, yeah, apple barrel <laughs> plaid. Apple barrel is a plaid product, but plaid stopped making the spiced carrot color, which is my very favorite orange for anything that is orange. <laughs> I mean, we're talking carrots, pumpkins, whatever. I really love that orange color and they stopped making it so i was on the hunt for an orange that was similar and i came across this orange from deco art and it's pretty darn close so this will be my orange that i use i'm sorry plaid i love you but i need that spiced carrots back anyhow we finished doing our rainbow um in the you know regular roy g biv colors and now I'm gonna paint in my little clouds. So I'm just kind of freehanding the tops of these clouds. You can definitely go in with a pencil like we did before, if you are not comfortable making the tops of those clouds, but I just figured I'd just kind of freehand them up. So I'm just gonna paint those in. And really there's not a whole lot of guidelines for these rainbows either. So if you are not comfortable just painting those on, definitely go in with a pencil beforehand so that you know where you're going to paint your lines so we're just going to give that a coat of white and then that area that's still wood i'm going to go in with the black and paint that so i have these little tiny wood pennant banner banner pennant pennant whatever anyhow they're the triangles that you can make into uh banners <laughs> So, the, but they're mini and they're so cute. I painted them white and now I'm gonna add them to my rainbow. So I'm just gonna place them down. They do have sticky on the back of them. Um, so they're like a kind of a sticker, but they're wood. So that's pretty cool. But I'm just kind of sticking these down to see where I wanna place them before I hot glue them on. And I do hot glue them on. I don't think I show you that part of the process because it's kind of boring but um, I do glue them down eventually so once I get them where I like them and glued down yeah I just glued them down right there I'm gonna go in with my Posca pen in black and I'm just going to freehand the word happy because that's how I feel when I look at this rainbow is happy so just dip it, up, do little dots on the ends of the letters, make them super cute. And then I'm gonna go in on my clouds and do some dot dash, dot dash all the way around. And I'll do that to both clouds. Now these pennant little banner things have little holes in them. So if you want to um, put twine through them, you definitely could. I was not going to do that so they're just left a blank but I think that that's fine because this holes are so small that you don't even hardly notice them taking this white Posca pen I'm going to add some little dots in each of the rainbow bows um, and yeah so just keep going until you're done with the colors now I'm going to take my uh, crocodile. This is like a, I don't know, scrapbooking tool, but it will cut through this wood very easily. So I wanted to make a hole 
since these did not come with a hole. And there you go. Now it's got a hole in it. Now we're gonna assemble our beaded garland. So I'm just using some Baker's twine. This has got gray running through it. I've had this in my stash for literally years. Guys, I am a hoarder. I have so much stuff. So um, yeah, just use any twine or Baker's twine or whatever you wanna use here. But I did go in and um, paint some of these smaller beads in white. And then I've got my rainbow color. So I'm gonna do white and then color, white to color, and continue until I've got all the colors of the rainbow followed by a white bead on my thing. Next, I'm going to loop the twine back up so down and back up that last loop and then i'm going to pull until it is as tight as i want that garland to be so i'm going to take the last of this baker's twine and i'm going to roll it up onto this piece of cardboard and then i also had this fun rainbow ribbon in my stash I am not sure if this came from Michaels or Walmart. One of the two places is where that came from. So I just wrapped that around too because I thought that would be kind of fun addition to my tassel. So now that you can't see what I'm doing because I was not being mindful, <laughs> I am just tying, I just looped my um, twine underneath all of those loops. And I'm going to tie it off so that one end is tied together as you can kind of see there and then I clip off the bottom of the other side now we're going to add our tassel and I found that this is the easiest way for me to add a tassel to my beaded garland and that's why I kind of looped that twine originally back up through my last bead because I think that it's easiest to tie it on like this so before i make that final part of the tassel that kind of makes that little top bump i'm going to tie it on and now it's attached so i think that's really easy <laughs> i don't know maybe it's not the easiest but that's how i find it the easiest so now I'm going to pull all of those twines and ribbons down and I'm going to create that top part of our tassel, like the part that says I'm a tassel. <laughs> um, we're just going to tie it off. So that's like the top quarter, top third, whatever you like. So I'm just going to tie that off and it's much easier if you have somebody that can help you with this part <laughs> but if not just kind of do your best wrap it around a few times and then tie it off and then you can clip the ends or you can leave them straggly however you like your tassel to look and sometimes I like them more like just kind of free and then other times I want them to be more precise so um, this is definitely a more free type of tassel but I think it is so cute and I can't wait to put it on my tear tray DIY number six is going to use these little wood hearts from the Dollar Tree I picked up quite a few packages of these wood hearts they were um, in a package came three different colors two different sizes and um yeah i used quite a few but i didn't use all of them so i thought you know what this will be a perfect way to use up some more of those little hearts and it'll be very very cute so i did give these a coat of white paint um, because i didn't want my green to be muddy at all and I don't know, some of you may know this, some of you may not know this, but green and red are opposite um, colors on the color wheel. So if you're looking at a color wheel, red and green are complete opposites, which means if you mix those colors together, you're gonna get kind of a brownish muddy color. And I wanted my green to be super bright. So I did paint over the red with white, but if you have the plain wood ornament or the plain wood hearts, you wouldn't need to do that. I just didn't have any more of the plain ones left. 
and these are the smaller size. So I'm taking this shadow box um, that came from Michaels. It was in the dollar bin section. It is a rectangle and I just gave it a couple coats of white paint. So now I'm gonna arrange my hearts in a shape that looks like a four leaf clover. So you've probably seen people do this before where they just kind of create a uh, little heart shape for leaf clovers. I think they're so cute. And I thought that this would be a perfect way to use up some of those hearts from Valentine's Day. Now I'm gonna go in with a bit of that green paint, same color, and my paintbrush, and I'm going to paint in a little stem. So you can make your stem as long or as short or as thin or as chubby as you want. Um, I don't think it really matters. They will all look super cute, but I'm just gonna paint that in. And then I found the letters to make the word lucky in my Scrabble stash. And I just went ahead and glued those on down. And now I wanted to kind of bring this back to our first project by adding in those black um, squares to make kind of a checkerboard pattern along the edge of our sign. I found a green button in my stash and I just glued that down to the middle of our little four leaf clovers. And now taking that Posca pen, I'm gonna go around doing some dash dots to finish off this super cute little sign. Real quick, I wanna invite you to come over to our Facebook group. Lisa and I have a Facebook group called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. Anyone can stop by and join. We love to see the projects you guys are creating and we love to share our own projects over there as well. So I'll leave that in my description box down below. And here's a final look at how this one turned out. I think this is super simple, but just really cute too. And now for our final DIY of the day. Don't cry. This one is super cute. You're gonna love it. So I was really inspired by these porch signs that I keep seeing all over Pinterest. People are doing them in all different kinds of styles. They're doing them in snowmen. They're doing them in uh, pilgrims. I've seen turkeys. I've seen um, leprechauns. I've seen bunnies. They're everywhere. And I thought, why not make something like this for my tear tray? So I am just taking some craft sticks. I think these are like the medium or jumbo size, the bigger ones that you can buy at the Dollar Tree. I just cut them down to about five and a half inches, three of them. And then I cut this little one, uh, like three and a half inches. I placed that down and made a mark because that's gonna be like my hat brim for my leprechaun. And I'm going to paint the bottom portion of my craft sticks with this sun-kissed peach again you can paint your leprechaun whichever color you want it they can be any color promise so paint it whatever color makes you happy i went in and created one of my little faces you guys have been around for a while you know that i love these little teardrop eyes and if you haven't been around for a while then I love these little teardrop eyes and I use them often anymore um, for my little faces. So I am just filling it in. And actually, if you've been around for a while, you know I'm doing this wrong. I didn't realize until after I got to painting in the color and I was like, oh no, I did it wrong. So normally what I do is I paint my teardrop shape the top portion of the eye I usually do in black and then that middle section I do the color and then the bottom section is a white. So you'll have to let me know if you see a huge difference in the way the eye looks uh, when the black and the color is mixed opposite. I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest so I think it was cute it still turned out really cute um, but I think I like the color better in the middle 
but at that point I was like, I'm not changing it. We're just going to go with it, see what happens. So uh, this is what we get today. And he still turned out really super cute. I'm not mad about, I'm not mad about it, obviously, or I would have changed it if it had been that big of a deal. But um, I was just kind of running out of time, didn't really want to change it. And overall, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Now I'm going in and I'm going to make him a beard. So I am just painting on some of this orange color again from Deco Art. And it is just this really pretty orange. I just kind of love the color of this orange. It's not bright. It's more of a muted orange without being too brown. And I think it just works really well for a lot of orange things. So I went in with a fine liner on the edge and now I'm just filling it in with a bigger uh, paint brush. And this look definitely was inspired by a um, pin that I saw on Pinterest. So I'll definitely link the um, website of the creator um, down below if you want to go check them out. But they did a big porch sign. And then, you know, so, but I liked the way they did their little beard and hair. So I definitely wanted to recreate that portion of my little leprechaun the same. So now I'm going to go in with a little bit of this cameo pink. I love cameo pink for cheeks and noses, but I do end up going in with a little bit of red. I just kind of felt like this little leprechaun might have more rosy cheeks and a rosier nose. So just adding in a little bit of red just to kind of deepen up that pink a little bit. Now I'm going to add a little bit of shine to his eyeballs with some of this Posca pen. And then I'm going to make his mouth. And he has got a big smile. He is a super happy guy. Then I wanted to do some little dash dots all around his beard and hair just to help bring a little more interest into our little leprechaun. And I did give him some little eyelashes too. It's so funny. Like my girls used to think that only girls could have eyelashes. <laughs> so, but I think he was cute. So I originally painted this black and then when I got the little brim, I was like, Ooh, he kind of looks Amish. And I wanted him to look like a leprechaun and not necessarily Amish. So I did change the hat to a green color and that's just the Kelly green. It looks a little deeper over the top of the black. Um, but I was okay with that because it's really pretty actually. So happy little accident there. Now I'm going to go in with a gold Posca paint pen. When I ordered my paint pens to try them out, it came with black, white, silver, and gold. So I hadn't used the gold yet. I really like this color. I think it's a really pretty gold color. It's not too yellow and it just kind of has a really nice metallic shine. So I painted on a little clover and then just doing some dot dash around his hat to finish him off. Super duper cute. And then I'm going to add a little tumbling tower block to the back to make this a little more of a freestanding piece. Sadly, this finishes our final DIY of the day, but he's so darn cute. I think he is just the happiest little leprechaun ever. So here's a look at my tear tray all together. I think that this turned out so lovely and I just really like it a lot. That is all I have for you guys today. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what was your favorite. Um, also make sure you check out the playlist. So much inspiration and so many talented creators joining us month after month. I hope you have a happy, healthy and blessed day and I will see you next time. Bye.